A laboring woman is rushed into the woods in the pouring rain as they try to suppress her screams, scared for their lives. When she is not able to do so, a man tries to knock her unconscious. What's going on? Let's learn more about these people. The film begins in a small town of Australia where a farmer named Arnold is complaining to Matt, a construction worker, about the roadblock that has been set up by them due to the construction of a bypass. Later, Matt drives his girlfriend's brother, Marcus, to his job at a diner. In the same town, a family is vacationing and the father, Peter, stops encouraging his kids to stretch their legs. His stepdaughter, Bella, and his son, Samuel, get out of the van to explore. Bella talks to an artist named Dennis and looks at his sketches when a police officer arrives and Dennis rushes to leave as he doesn't have a permit. At the diner, we see Matt's girlfriend, Amelia, studying law in her free time. Soon, Matt arrives and Amelia's mother, Ellen, expresses her concern about him working at the bypass, but Amelia defends him. Matt informs Amelia that he is going to play at the town's rugby match tonight, but she thinks it's a bad idea as it gets really competitive and last time, Matt ended up in a coma. During the practice, the team's captain Jackson is visited by his girlfriend, Vanessa, who discloses that she is pregnant and Jackson gets thrilled to hear the news. At the stadium, the commentator, Seth, announces that the team's ex-captain, Matt, is going to join the game, and it is revealed that Jackson and Matt do not like each other and often get into feuds. Meanwhile, the traveling family has lost Bella, and Peter regrets letting her go alone, but his wife, Jenny, assures him that they will find her. They decide to meet at the van while Peter continues looking for Bella. He soon finds her watching the rugby game and scolds her for being so irresponsible, instructing her to stay close. Bella snaps at him, saying that he can't just walk into their lives and order around. Just then, the power goes out, followed by a distant sound of explosion. Several lights are seen coming near the stadium while the people watch in shock. It turns out to be a huge spaceship which starts firing at the ground as people scatter to find shelter. Bella falls to the ground and Marcus helps her up as they run while Amelia leaves Ellen behind to get Marcus. But several extraterrestrial beings armed with heavy machines start attacking everyone. Amelia and Matt helplessly watch Ellen being dragged away by an alien. Bella notices them and calls to get inside the van. They rush towards it while helping the injured Seth. Peter wants to wait for his wife and son, but Matt urges that they need to flee and promises to help find his family later. Amelia also notices Jackson and Vanessa and invites them into the van as well, as the cast must stay together. Peter drives the van, closely escaping the explosion, but soon gets tailed by a spacecraft on the highway. They get saved by the Australian Air Force, who shoots the spacecraft down. Matt gets out to look at the wreckage, but there is no sign of an alien, so he deduces it to be a drone. Arnold then arrives at the place and realizes that Dennis has hitched a ride without his knowledge. He bursts into anger, but Dennis claims that he knows a place where they can hide and leads the group to an abandoned timber mill in the forest. The next morning, they look at the sky as a huge spaceship hovers above the Earth. Jackson says that they don't have a chance to survive as none of them have any experience in weapons, but Bella reveals that Peter has the experience as he was in a gunfight and was from prison just last month. Arnold also reveals that he is a veteran. At night, Matt, Amelia, and Dennis visit the town to get some supplies. They soon notice some aliens leading the town folks in a direction, so they follow them into a factory and find a crowd of people held captive by the aliens. A woman recognizes them and reveals to them that Ellen has been moved away with some other captives. As the guards arrive, Matt promises to come back before leaving. After they get back, an alien ship arrives and two aliens scout the area as the group hides. One of them is about to catch Matt and Amelia when Peter starts shooting, but the bullet fails to pass the armor. The alien is about to shoot Peter back when Matt tackles it down and a struggle ensues between the two. Meanwhile, the other alien grabs Dennis. Arnold rushes to help him and pulls the creature down while Jackson starts hitting him with a crowbar. Vanessa grabs the alien gun and shoots the one struggling with Matt. Peter rushes to help Jackson, who is being tackled by the other alien, and shoots him in the head. 
Later, the group examines their bodies and finds out that the aliens have difficulty seeing them with their helmets as it detects all life forms and humans become almost invisible in the forest as there is too much life there. After discovering this weakness, they start their training in the forest while also rescuing the captives. The more they fight, the more weapons they gather as well as an army of people who want to fight along. As the fight between the two life forms continues, the group starts displaying the alien bodies in hopes to intimidate them. Isn't that what Vlad the Impaler did? This war goes on for eight months, and one day, Amelia and Matt come across an escaped captive who tells them that the aliens are experimenting on humans and some of them are kept as forced laborers to plant their food. She gives them a device that she stole, but just then gets attacked by an alien. The couple runs away and meet the team tasked to blow up an alien outpost. They successfully initiate the blast, and while others walk away, Amelia empathically notices the injured aliens helping each other. Back in the camp, Jackson is held an alien captive. Amelia talks to Matt and says that the aliens aren't leaving and the humans need to find peace with the fact that things will never go back to normal. Meanwhile, now nine months pregnant, Vanessa is also disappointed at Jackson for bringing the alien into the camp and advises him to keep his ego in check as he keeps trying to be the best. She urges him to let others take control as she wants him to be there when the baby arrives. Later, Amelia goes to the captive in hopes to find what the device is. She discovers that it contains a hologram that shows their journey to the Earth. Matt gets there and deactivates it. They discuss what to do with the alien, and Peter decides to kill it. Jackson and Seth try to intervene, but Peter doesn't stop and engagingly ends the alien. Matt, along with Jackson and Marcus, go to the factory to rescue the remaining captives. While Amelia is wandering alone, she notices the aliens forcing some captives to grow something. She sneaks in and steals a sample of the crop. Soon, Vanessa goes into labor, so Peter and Seth help her inside the camp while Dennis runs out to inform Jackson about this. But before they could go back, the aliens attack them. In the camp, a spacecraft suddenly appears, so they rush the still laboring Vanessa into the forest. Meanwhile, while fighting with the aliens, Matt gets knocked out. In the forest, Seth notices the aliens killing everyone in the camp, so he gives Vanessa a belt to stop her from screaming, but she still screams out loud. He wants to knock her unconscious, but Peter restrains him. Bella successfully delivers the baby, while Peter ends up killing Seth during the struggle. Vanessa names the baby Allison before dying of blood loss. The Australian army then arrives to help Jackson, and they return back to find Vanessa gone. They get taken to the military camp and get informed that they are considered as heroes who inspired everyone to keep fighting. Matt is still unconscious, so they put him in the infirmary tent. While Peter and Amelia discuss going back to the factory to find Jenny and Samuel, an officer overhears it and takes them to Colonel Grant. She reveals that the aliens have built a bioweapon in town and moved it to Sydney, so they are planning on attacking it. But they need another distraction for the aliens to succeed in this mission. She sends the group with some of her men to the factory as a distraction while the military attacks the bioweapon in Sydney. Arnold is not able to participate due to his injury and still grieving, Jackson wants to stay out of it. In order to avoid coming across the aliens patrolling roads, the team drives through the farm. Peter then notices Jenny and Samuel working among the captives. Back in the camp, the colonel gets informed that the Air Force is fighting against way more spaceships than they expected, and the aliens are also strengthening their army in the town before losing all connection with Sydney. She realizes that they have been tricked and the bioweapon is still in the town, but there is no way to contact the force. Jackson gets informed about it, and the colonel says that she can't send more men as it's a suicide mission. Jackson goes to wake his former nemesis, Matt, warning that Amelia and Marcus are in danger, so they rush to save them after Jackson asks Arnold to take care of the baby. As soon as they leave, the military camp gets attacked by aliens. Meanwhile, the group also attacks the aliens at the farm. Would that be uh, an alien ant farm? Matt hears the gun battle before entering the factory and gets worried about Amelia, but Jackson encourages him to focus on finding the bioweapon. They continue inside and take down the guards. While Matt helps the captives escape, Jackson puts explosives all around the factory. Matt succeeds in finding the bioweapon when an alien tries to take it back. 
Matt knocks it down, but other aliens arrive and ask him to surrender. One of them has learnt English in eight months, along with the Australian accent. That is impressive. It explains that they need to live on Earth as their planet got destroyed the same way humans are destroying Earth. Oh, the irony. Jackson then starts shooting at them, allowing Matt to escape. Meanwhile, at the farm, the team calls for backup and the Air Force soon arrives with help. Captives also start fighting against the aliens and the team starts overpowering. Matt soon radios the military and informs them that he has found the bioweapon, but would not be able to get out and bids goodbye to Amelia, despite her pleas. He throws the bioweapon at Jackson and starts shooting the aliens, but Jackson gets hurt and insists Matt to leave and take care of Allison. Matt then runs off with a bioweapon while Jackson distracts the aliens by firing at them. He soon initiates the blast, which takes down the entire factory. After hearing this explosion, the aliens at the farm surrender. Peter and Bella reunite with their family, and Amelia manages to rescue her mother. After reuniting with Matt, she talks to one of the aliens about sharing the planet in hopes to stop the unnecessary bloodshed, and they shake hands on it. The film ends as humans and aliens fight side by side against the rogue aliens who refuse to join the settlement. So, what do you think about this movie? Do you think it's possible for humans to coexist with aliens from outer space here on Earth? And do you think they're any good at rugby? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to watch more on Movie Shortens, click on our next videos and playlist on the screen. As always, thanks for watching.